Hello guys, today is the fourth anniversary of the 2020 election, and we are now entering the 2024 election, which appears to be the closest one in decades, probably since 2000. We've got Vice President Harris and Minnesota Governor Tim Walz on one side, and former uh, President Trump and J.D. Vance, the junior U.S. Senator from Ohio, on the other side. So let's go ahead and fill out the map. For context, anything that has anything that is greater than fifteen percent is safe for a candidate. Five to fifteen is likely, and lean is one to five. Anything below that is tilt. So we're gonna be using all the data that we've got to do an election prediction. So Starting with the states, where starting with the safe states, oh, whoops, we've got Washington, Oregon, and California for the Vice President Harris, as well as Hawaii, there, Illinois, and the East Coasts, New York, Vermont, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, D.C., Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, and also Maine's. 1st Congressional District, and Colorado. I did want to briefly touch on Colorado because many people are saying that it's going to be a likely state. So let me just go ahead and see what it's going to be like. So Colorado is one of the fastest left-trending states in the entire nation. So if you go ahead and take a look at the 2020 electoral map, Joe Biden won Colorado by about 13 and a half points, while Hillary Clinton won it by just under five percentage points. This shows that Colorado has shifted about eight points or so leftward. Meanwhile, the nation has only sh had only shifted about two points leftward. So, two and a half, I think. So then, that would mean about six points moving rightward, leftward. And for Vice President Harris, I think she's going to win by between two to three percentage points in the popular vote. But you and I both know that that's not the way you win an election. So, that's why I'm placing Colorado in the safe column for the Democrats. Now moving on to Trump and Vance's safe states, which are all scattered around the Midwest. Da -da -da -da. And those are the states that he has a good chance of winning. That lifts his electoral tally up to just 92. He's trailing Harris by almost 100 electoral votes. So I'll explain that in some time, but let's go ahead and do the states that are likely. An upset's not entirely out of the question here, but it's not really going to happen. New Mexico, technically speaking, because of its large Hispanic population, I'm surprised that it's not a swing state already, kind of, but it's possible that New Mexico could become a swing state in future cycles. Next up, we have Minnesota, home state of Governor Walls, Harris's running mate, Nebraska's 2nd Congressional District, Maine at large, New Hampshire, and Virginia. Over in Virginia... Back when Biden was still in the race, Trump was polling a bit ahead, but I guess ever since Harris took over at the top of the ticket, things have just been much more in play for the vice president over there. And those lift Harris up to a foundational total of 226 electoral votes. As for Trump, his states are Alaska, Florida, Texas, where they had a close call in the 2020 cycle. As you can see in the 2020 cycle, it was borderline lean, but we're just going to place it in the likely column for now, especially considering Trump has made gains among Hispanic voters. 
And then I did want to touch on Iowa. Recently, one of Iowa's most accurate pollsters has Harris up by three points. And while I don't think that that's going to happen, let's go ahead and take a look at the early voting data for Iowa. In Iowa, the early voting data shows shows Democrats just one percentage point under Republicans of registered early voters. And keep it, so I'm just going to go ahead and place Iowa in the lean column, and that would be enough to put Missouri, Indiana, and South Carolina in the like, downgraded to likely. And also Maine's second congressional district, which is a wider and more rural district, and like Nebraska, splits its electoral votes. And also Ohio. Ohio was once the ultimate bellwether state. Let's go ahead and take a look far back, as far back as the cycle of 1988. Between the cycle of 1988 and the cycles of 2020, whoever won Ohio won the uh, presidency. Ohio Trump winning Ohio in 2020 shows its status as a bellwether has been diminished. However, in 2024, Ohio currently has, Ohio polling is currently much, a bit tighter per se. Also, the competitive Senate race here in Ohio may play a role in, in the narrower race. However, it would not surprise me me if in future cycles Ohio becomes competitive once again but for now it's probably going to stay in Trump's column just by a smaller margin. Trump only leads by about 5.9 percentage points and the latest poll show Trump up by only 6 to 7 points. I'll place it in the likely column for now though it may be downgraded to lean in a couple of weeks. And that lifts Trump up to 219. Now moving on to the battleground states. These states are, the, are where the candidates have spent their most time and money. So let's go ahead and take a look at the battleground states. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the state of Nevada. We're going to be going west to east on this map. So here we have Nevada. Nevada is a state where Trump's chances have increased in recent weeks, and that's because the early vote, the early voter turnout here is pretty high amongst uh, amongst Republicans, especially compared to the 2020 election. And Nevada did overestimate Republicans in the past, but I've got a feeling that at this point it's going to be less of that. I do. That being said, I do trust poll sizes that are four digits, moreover than the ones that are three digits. So the latest four-digit survey shows Harris up by three percentage points. But let's go ahead and look at Nevada's. In Nevada, Trump is up by a full percentage point on the averages. So later surveys show Trump up. So I'm just going to go ahead and place Nevada in the tilt Republican column for now. Don't see it really being upgraded to lean. Now going up to my home state of Arizona, a state that is on the opposite trajectory of Nevada, once a part of the Red Wall, now becoming a very competitive state. Here in Arizona, they have the Democrats have won the following races. They have they won the uh they won 2018 Senate co- contest, the 2020 special election Senate contest. Biden flipped the Biden flipped Arizona by just a raw vote margin of around 10,000 votes. Then the governorship and 2022 race all went to Democrats. 
They're on a winning streak in Arizona right now, and that can be attributed to my home county of Maricopa County. This one is a very rapidly growing county in terms of diversification. Also in Arizona, because of the decline of split ticket voting, we can see, we can get a bit of a hint that, uh, we can get a bit of a hint that Ruben Gag is going to win, and thus it's probably going to be a bit closer in Arizona. So seeing the last four-digit survey shows Trump up by 1,025, and Trump is up by around 2.6 points in Arizona. So I'm predicting Trump's going to win by around fifteen to 20,000 votes here in Arizona. So I'll go ahead and place it in the tilt column for him at least for today. Now moving on to Georgia. Georgia is the peach state and it is one and it is it was also one of the states that Biden flipped in 2020 by the narrowest percentage margin with a raw vote margin of I think just over 12,000 votes. Georgia is the one that Trump is most likely to win in 2024 because of his gains amongst black voters. So I'm going to go ahead and look this latest, these latest polls show Trump up by three points. And one survey shows him tied two percentage points, three percentage points. We're just going to say the Siena College poll is an outlier and go ahead and look at the overall average. Per the overall average, it does look like Trump is up by two percentage points. I'll go ahead and place Georgia in the lean Republican column for now, probably by 1.1 percentage points. Now for North Carolina. North Carolina was once fundamentally the reddest of all the swing states. However, the recent controversy with Republican nominee Mark Robinson for the governorship um has put it in play for has put it in play for Kamala Harris. We're gonna go ahead and look. The latest large survey shows Trump up by three percentage points. I do notice Siena College does tend to favor Harris a lot, so not really sure what that's about. Again, another poll shows Harris up by one percentage point, three percentage points for Trump. Let's go ahead and look at RCP's polling average. In RCP's polling average, you can see that it was one and a half percentage points for Trump. Now let's go ahead and look at the early voting data. As you can see, about it's pretty evenly split between Democrats, Republicans, and Independents. I'm just gonna go ahead and place North Carolina in the purple for now. Now going on to Pennsylvania, it is pretty much the ultimate swing state now. And after Florida, and after 2020, when Florida no longer was competitive anymore, Pennsylvania is now the swing state where they, which has the most electoral votes. Here in 2024, candidates have spent the most time and money here in Pennsylvania than any other state. These four, a lot of four digit surveys show Trump up in recent days. One shows Harris up, then Trump. So let me go ahead and look at the real clear polling average. The real clear polling average is currently showing Trump up by just 0.3. So a bare minimum. And let's go ahead and look at the, as you can see, about 57% Democrats, 33% Republicans, 10% Independents. Keep in mind, Pennsylvania's early voting does tend to favor uh, d Democrats a bit. So I'm just going to go ahead and place it in the purple column for now. Now moving on to our final two states, the Wimpa states, Wisconsin of the Wimpa Trio, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. As you may know, they've all voted together these past several cycles. However, I've got a feeling that's going to break this cycle, and I'll tell you why. Let's go ahead and look at Michigan, which is fundamentally the bluest of 
all the swing states in general. Trump barely flipped Michigan in 2016 by 0.22%. I don't know how much that is in terms of uh, percentage. Let me go ahead and look to see how much that is in terms of raw votes. So it was a raw vote margin of just over 11,000 votes. Just over, like, just under 11,000 votes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the early voting data here. Uh, early voting data here shows even splits. And let's go ahead and take a look at the polls for Michigan. At least Decision Desk HQ's model. And Michigan is the one where Harris has generally pulled the best all cycle long, and all I can and I'm not really too surprised by that. Uh, where is Michigan? Oh, whoops! Accidentally clicked on me zero two. Nope. Oh. And it's taken me to an ad site. That is great. My laptop is super slow. Michigan. Here we are in Michigan. And as you can see, Kamala Harris has about a 56% chance of winning. Uh, Siena, Col Siena College polls can't be too trustworthy, but 1,998 likely voters state Trump is up. Trump is up. Harris is up. And while I think that the fundamentals of Michigan give Harris a slight edge, so I'm just going to go ahead and place it in the tilt column for her. Last but certainly not least, we've got Wisconsin. Wisconsin is the last of the Wimpa states and the Wisconsin and Wisconsin does seem to be slightly better than a coin flip for former president Trump. So we can see the latest four digit survey from Siena College shows Harris up by two points. Two points. With that being said, Trump has been able to perform better with working class white voters, which is high, which is a higher in Michigan. As you can see, there are big polling error, big polling misses in Wisconsin right now. Harris is up by two points, and based on this latest data point, I'll just go ahead and I'll place it in the tilt Democrat column. So. And honestly, if that is the case, I guess that would mean that Pennsylvania would also, because Pennsylvania is a bit bluer than Wisconsin. Uh, you know what? I'll just place it in the toss-up column. Okay, so no one has favored in the race to 270 at the moment. So that is it. My final prediction. for This is going to be the last prediction of the cycle for... U.S. President. Hello. I will go ahead and be making a Senate prediction video. Answer 